tourism market and how can we further develop this? Well, we saw from the recent release from the, from, uh, the CEO of uh, the regional CPL body that uh, St. Lucia benefited hugely from the hosting of CPL last time around and uh, we will continue to do just that. St. Lucia is one of the premier grounds in the region. Ken Crafton continues to do good work in preparing the Darren Sammy cricket grounds and, and especially the pitch for the batting paradise that it is. And of course, bowlers who bowl in the right areas could also enjoy success in St. Lucia. And so we always look forward to it developing more and more. Coming over COVID, COVID, I think the numbers, numbers don't lie. I mean, millions watched St. Lucia uh, during CPL, especially in the Indian market. And we're expecting a lot more to continue to watch St. Lucia. The British market is another one that we do very well with when it comes to cricket development. And sports really is the biggest catalyst to advertising St. Lucia in the world. Uh, Julian Alfred, the name is synonymous with females um, sprinting success. And so you can try any measure. And if you speak to the Minister of Tourism and he's, he's, he's honest to you, he will tell you the best way the absolute best way to market St. Lucia right now is through the exploits of our young men and women. And uh, sports is really the direction that will ensure that St. Lucia continues to enjoy economic benefits and uh, uh, really do what we need to do to, you know, create employment in our tourism market and industry for our young people. But how do we go about on marrying the two, the whole aspect of sports and tourism? How have we done enough to really solidify our footing in that sports tourism? Well, there's never enough. We need to continue to explore all aspects. And this is why I've been having uh, a lot of conversation with the Cycling Association, because we know in a French territory in the, week, in, the, in the region, Martinique, Guadeloupe, there's a huge cycling culture. And we truly want to see a cycling take off to where it needs to be to really tap into that sports tourism niche. Uh, the problem with cycling in St. Lucia and its development, there was no uh, sort of collaboration between infrastructural development and cycling. And so you find that cyclists do not have a safe haven to practice their trade. And so we are looking at the option of developing a velodrome for cyclists in St. Lucia and uh, thereafter ensuring that we can have some regional tournaments. And uh, we know Martinique, they travel by droves, hundreds for cycling. Also in terms of long distance running, marathons, it's another area where we can collaborate with the Ministry of Tourism to get some half marathons, some marathons during our our weekend calendars and uh, bring in some more persons to the beautiful shores of St. Lucia. Okay, Mr. Minister, mm -hmm. tomorrow you will see the opening of the budget and things. What are your expectations and things for, for your ministry and for the team? What are you talking about? Well, the Ministry of Sports have been very excited about our school sports program. Um, you will be seeing on the 31st of May the inter-schools finals taking place at the Soufre Mini Stadium. There were a lot of things that needed to be cleared up. Uh, first of all, on behalf of my ministry, I will say that we did our part in the consultative process of ensuring that the Ministry of Education was finished with the venue, the date and time for our tournaments. I've heard some of the machinations in the public domain that the Ministry of Sports did not consult. Uh, it falls under the remit of the Ministry of Education who had a representative on at every venture on the development committee and the strategic committee for school sports uh, as part of the organization towards Intersect to provide and furnish that information to the teachers, the principals, uh, and the athletes. And of course, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is responsible for the technical aspect of the inter-schools, the venue, uh, the transportation, and ensuring that the event runs smoothly. Similar to CPL and those events, the Ministry of, Ministry of Tourism is the one who negotiates packages for CPL and the regional tournaments in St. Lucia because it's tourism centered. And then the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports deals with the technical aspects of the venue preparation and the dynamics on the ground for the events. And so I want to make it abundantly clear that I'm very proud of my ministry's exploits in trying to, as much as possible, um, have the inter-secondary school sports competition held on the weekend, as was discussed more than a year ago. Uh, but we had some issues with a chief education officer not being present at 
at our meetings because of some resignations uh, under the Ministry of Education, which did not allow the communication process to be smooth. I'm very proud of my ministry's exploits, and we are certainly hoping to have a very good event on the 31st of May at the Soufre Mini Stadium. Um, in the budget, we will be discussing the semi-professionalization of football. People are very excited that for the first time in St. Lucia's history, uh, footballers will be paid uh, to play football. I am jealous because I'm the minister, with the, along with the prime minister, pushing the agenda. And I would look back at my times waking up very early in the morning to get my 40-minute jog and then ball drills uh, with coaches like Francis Babalastic and, of course, later on at the under-17 level with Stuart Charles. And uh, training so very hard and never been paid a dime. And uh, I'm very excited that in the budget this year, you will hear the Prime Minister's pronouncements for the semi-professionalization of football in St. Lucia. It's a step in the right direction. And uh, I think our young people can benefit from knowing that they don't have to be on the blocks. They can come play some football and get some compensation. And uh, of course, eventually you would see uh, the physiotherapists, those who want to get involved in videography and the other aspects of sport entertainment could definitely benefit from that commercial activity. Also in the budget, we'll be seeing a lot more competitions. We should be seeing basketball, having a Prime Minister's Cup, and of course there'll be some player compensation. I think player compensation is where the Prime Minister really wants to go with the youth economy. Um, and netball is going to get an injection as well. And so I'm excited about, about those activities, along with the traditional cricket competitions um, we expected SPL to come back in a big way and uh, cricket has been compensated for their activities and so um, we'll also be talking about venues and the development of venues this year uh, almost a 10 10 playing fields uh, will be earmarked for lighting and sitting programs so that we can bring the fans in the stadium I mean the Philip Park and Darren Sami as we know are two very very critical aspects of, of venues for development, along with the gardens and VG playing field and when playing field in the south. And so we'll be seeing a lot in the budget to really continue to develop sports. And I think we all here are confident that when we look back 10, 20 years from now, we will know when sports really took off in this country. Simulcious carriage and delegation will be off not too long from now. Uh, what kind of a role did your ministry play in ensuring that uh, our best will be rep our best will represent the island at the upcoming competition and uh, your words to the team that will be off in a few weeks time? Naomi London, Naomi London, Naomi London. Um, the Viewfort native has been under our trading program for uh, the better part of a year now under the elite program. We've ensured that we, as much as possible, provide as much support for her, for her to excel. Um, we see her as one of the, the huge prospects going forward. As you would know, um, her times at the age of 14 and 15 are actually faster than what we, what we saw from Julian Alfred, which says to us that we have a huge prospect in Naomi London, and we're certainly hoping that um, she will bring, bring home the bacon uh, this time she had a very good show in last year, along with some of the other athletes that we see coming on stream. Uh, the ministry continues to provide training for coaching, uh, the coaching development program with, in collaboration with the, the Cubans uh, to try to prepare our athletes the best we can. Uh, just received the invitation. It's the 50th Carifta Games, and so I'm putting it out there in the, the public domain that I was invited to attend the 50th Carifta Games, and the other ministers in the region will be in attendance to really lend our support to Carifta, the Carifta movement, and the athletes that they've developed. So we really expecting our athletes to come out trumps this time around. Let me put you on the spot. One of your staffers recently, a couple of weeks ago, was officially uh, recognized by the country for his role in, in terms of you know, nurturing St. Lucia's athletes over the decades. I'm um, speaking of no other than Toatine. Yeah. Your, your, your response to his, uh, his commendation and the investiture. My response is that I mean, every St. Lucian who's called me on this has said how shocked they are that this was not done before. Uh, Cuthbert Toatide Modest was the national coach when I first represented St. Lucia at the age of nine. How many, how many decades? <laughs> <laughs> and he was the actual national coach. Um, so 
every athlete, including the likes of Darren, Sammy, Levon, Spencer, they would have had some counselor interaction or interface with Cuthbert Twati de Modes. And when this government came in and we looked at the vestiture and we realized that Cuthbert Modes had not been commended for his work towards the development of athletes, including Julian Alfred, Makiba Alcid, Shaper, I mean, we said as a government that we, we had to correct a, a wrong and we ensured that he was given that honor. Um, and so congratulations to, to Tuatini, as I know him, a very strict individual. Um, we certainly hope that his, his work continues in the Central Castries and the St. Lucia area, um, in convent as a, as a PE coach as a coach we know about his commitment and uh, we just we just want to as a ministry say that uh, the other individuals that have been developing sports in St. Lucia will be given um, their time to shine as well. Okay, just looking back to the um, semi-professionalization of football, mm -hmm. um, what challenges do you foresee because um, on what on the ground is there is a chronic lack of coaches and that would hamper the process. Um, just what challenges do you see with this venture? I think there's a chronic lack of professional referees, um, but the St. Lucia Football Association, through their licensing program, I know they've trained over 100 de-licensed coaches, and they are available in St. Lucia right now. Um, they've trained a, a, a cadre of C-licensed coaches as well, and uh, I see the semi-professionalization of football actually helping with uh, further getting B-licensed and even A-licensed coaches that could uh, pretty much be on an international level um, uh, from St. Lucia and so uh, of course you know when you're doing something for the first time you will have glitches I'm expecting and anticipating some some it's, it's like a pilot for the first year some challenges but I'm very confident that the semi-pro league will be something that uh, as time goes by people will gravitate towards more and more um, uh, I think yeah, I think coaching is good. I think physiotherapists, we would be needing um, some more of that in St. Lucia. I think it just opens the door for anybody who wants to get involved in sports and you have a talent and a desire to really come to the fore right now. Um, so I'm, I'm not worried about coaching. I, um, I would say as a minister, the level of, of refereeing and of course the crowd response to refereeing is something that we've always had challenges with. And uh, I certainly hope that we, as a nation, we would come together to, to really see the benefit of what we are doing right now in sports. And finally, from me, is the Skill 758. I'm just a quick update on how the app has been progressing and just making that bend in new employment. Yes, we've been having some challenges with the app um, simply because um, the you know you have the different platforms the apple the apple store and the play store uh, that has been rectified and so we're expecting more and more persons to go to the app and provide their information that will form part of a database to and, and ensure that we provide the skills the training and more opportunities for our young people um, is uh, the unemployment issue is something i take very seriously as a minister of youth, and I know the Prime Minister as the Minister for Youth Economy as well, and we're certainly hoping within the, a two-year period that we can see a huge turn in events that will allow our young people to be more confident in the system and decide to go towards employment rather than the gangs that we see developing throughout our country. So, Jason Harris from BDS, um, with the recent passing of legislation just to help um, you guys in the all I guess, crime fighting efforts. Um, just tell us um, how has this bolstered the efforts, and including the RSSB in Heron Island, and just crime fighting on a war. Just tell us about your efforts, your initiatives, and the, what the government has done to really help you guys. How has this affected your crime fighting strategies, and one alleviating the crime fighting strategies? Um, no. Sorry, sorry, no, because I'm confused. No, no yeah. Yeah, one just, question at a time. Yeah. So for the record, my name is Ronald Philip, mm -hmm. Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of strategic operations. R O N A L D P H I L L I P. Awesome. Um, just um, in terms of the government's efforts in helping you in your crime fighting strategies, how has this affected you guys? Um, one question. <laughs> <laughs> one question. You referring to the legislation? The legislation and everything that they've done, including including the RSS and. Everything that they've done to support the Manhattan initiative. Okay, just for the record, Senusha is part of the regional security system. We have the we have um, officers from friendly governments, Dominica, Barbados, 
Saint Vincent, Saint Vincent Grenada. Grenada. Um, they're in tandem with our local police officers. So we have officers on the ground in terms of trying to help de-escalate the crime situation that has happened, especially over the last few weeks. So far, I can say that the operations seem to be moving smoothly. Residents are very pleased, especially residents of Vuford. They're very happy with what they're seeing. The police, are, we have intensified our efforts. We've intensified patrols. We have engaged in more searches. So, so far, the operations are going on smoothly. And the legislation that the government has enacted, how does this um, help your efforts? Well, we're very happy with the legislation because it gives the police more powers to operate. Now that the area is declared an escalated crime area, police officers can, once police officers are operating in good faith, it is important to note that the legislation speaks to good faith. So once police officers are operating in good faith, it gives police officers more search powers um, in terms of the arrest, how long somebody can be detained for. So this is good for law enforcement. And finally, just as follow up, um, um, there have been questions um, about the trampling of human rights with this legislation as well. Um, how, how is this affecting you in terms of trying not to trample on these rights and enacting your duties as legislator? Well, as far as I know, we are a professional police organization. And during our briefing, we always speak, we always speak to officers in terms of respecting the rights of others. Again, the legislation does not speak to violating human rights. It specifically states that officers who act in good faith and acting in good faith, for one to act in good faith, they must, they must uphold the values of the police force, which, which speaks to professionalism. So again, we're not, our, again, if persons have any complaints, uh, if they think that their rights are being trampled on, there are mechanisms in place. There, there is the police complaints unit. If you figure that a police officer does something wrong, you can take your grievances to a lawyer. So these mechanisms are, are, have always been in place. But the, the, the issue we're dealing with is not one where we're going and antagonize everybody, but the point is we persons have, human rights activists have their job to play and the police have their role. So this is not going to deter our efforts. We, we, we implore your police officers to act professionally, but we are not going to, we are not going to be too perturbed by the complaints. Again, we respect, we, we respect persons' human rights. The officers are encouraged to behave professionally, but that is not going to deter our efforts. If there is, if we have reason to believe that something is, good, is happening or taking place, we are going to act. Okay, um, Jeremiah Joseph, HGS. I'm um, just going to, can you just give us an update in relation to arrest? We know that we had a release where a number of individuals was, was detained. Um, can you tell us what has happened since? Have they arrested or charged anybody in relation to the shooting? Did you report? Yes, so far, police, we have arrested and charged a 22-year-old, Arenato Sume, for the for the murder of Lawrence Savory that occurred on the 9th of March 2023. So one person has been arrested for one of the murders and been charged. We are, again, we are working on several leads. We require some of our investigations, we require some level of um, DNA, but we are actively pursuing those cases and indiv individuals. So, so far, from your question, but you have only one person has been charged for like I said to you, the investigations are active investigations. The police, the police is co we are currently carrying out investigations. From the operations, it's not just for the homicide. We have also arrested individuals for firearm. We have arrested individuals for ammunition, possession of ammunition. We have arrested individuals for drugs. Yeah, uh, Well, what I could tell you, we, we, we're adopting a blended approach. So we have an infusion of local police officers along with the regional officers. Um, you may see them primarily in Viewfort, but they're operating island-wide. And they're based in Viewfort? They're based in Saint Lucia. <laughs>
announcement of 555 where you people in the hotline. Um, can you just tell us about that because we understand there is probably somebody if information is being assisted and, and a fine is and can you just tell us on this what exactly will be this notice? Okay, it's a 555, it's a new it's a new hotline where persons, members of the public, could give information to assist the police in crime fighting. And of course, the, the, the uh, identity will remain unknown. We have uh, put in place some code, a special code, so when you give the information, whilst we mentioned giving you some compensation if you give volunteer information, there is a particular code in place. We have it a way where Persons will not know who are the who are the ones volunteering the information. There is a code in place, so when you give the information, you'll be given a code, and you could determine whether it's a priest or whether it's um, um, somebody involved in citizen security, like Mr. Dr. King, could um, give you your compensation. Not necessarily the police. We not, we have not we are not involved in you know giving you the compensation. We, it is so designed the way that you will know, your identity will not be known you will decide how you collect your compensation so that as it relates to the code that you'll be given. So that means if somebody is um, found guilty or something, the information is brought to you in, in return to arrest or Of course, if we get information, of course, that's what we want, to assist us in crime fighting. We are determined to make St. Lucia a better place. And whatever information we can get to do that, we are going to welcome it. Is there a Wait, Jerry. So one of the time. Okay. Yeah, but I have a call. Were you asking something, Jerry? Yes, I'm just saying, is there a, a, a amount? Uh, that will be determined based on the information received. We cannot tell you right now what amount will be given. It will be determined based on the information we receive. And of course, how, how, um, how, how good this information is. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will Good morning, John Tench, NBC Prime. Uh, I think one of the main concerns uh, from citizens of the public is that when the police publish, let's say, uh, a wanted poster for an individual, his or her image is not attached to it. And so the question is, is that something deliberate or is it something you're looking into or just attaching an image of someone who's wanted by the police? Um, it is something we have, we're going to discuss. We want to, um, we have started discussion in that regard. And as soon as we have decided what we're going to disregard, we'll give you an update. Just um, in terms of the RSS being here, we understand that it is an escalated crime situation. What happens with the departure of the RSS in the following weeks? What mechanisms are in place to ensure that our crime fighting strategy remains on top? Um, as Deputy Philip indicated before, the motive for RSS, the, the motive, the objective of RSS is um, for RSS states to work together to fight crime, anything that threat national security. That be, that be threatening national security. That, um, RSS, um, of course, believes that together, unity, when we are strengthened, when we are together, we have strength. Bringing RSS in St. Lucia does not mean that the men and women in the police force, they're not capable of doing their work. It gives us the opportunity, especially now with the escalation of crime, we will have more numbers in the ground. So officers will be involved in patrolling, doing operations to deal with the threats of national security, whilst we can, and remember, in as much as the, we are concerned about VFOT right now, we are concerned about St. Lucia in its entirety. So with the increasing numbers, we can focus on VFOT and as well, focusing during this time on other areas in St. Lucia. So it is a good thing that we have RSS to assist us and what is happening now. At the same time, it enables us to, re to, um, to return normalcy to the citizens of St. Lucia, especially in the southern part of the island. Just one follow-up, um, and in terms of the allegations of corruption within the force, I remember you mentioned um, at the start of your stint that you would be cracking down on some of those. Just, um, is there any update that you can give us, or is there any plan of action in doing so? Of course, I don't think corruption is unique to any one um, organization. Um, I've said before, if I am aware of any matters dealing with corruption within the organization, I have zero tolerance for it and I'll be dealing with it. 
So we have nothing has been brought to my attention. And of course, if anything is brought to my attention, rest assured, I'll be, dealt, I'll be dealing with it. We are, we are ways, there are ways of dealing with corruption within any organization and the police force is not unique. You can do your investigations and of course we have the, comp you can do internal and you can of course take it to another level. Kishma Seri, Choice TV. Madam Commissioner, with, there's been a lot of misinformation with regards to the police powers bill, um, generally where the public is concerned. There's also been the issue of, like Jason mentioned, corruption, etc. Generally, um, even with instances like this where we're sitting here and we're having a press briefing, mm -hmm. any plans as part of the strategy to strengthen the relationship with the police and the press as it relates to more press briefing, more interactions, uh, keeping persons in the know, as much as it is strategically feasible? Of course, of course we are ever ready to, to work with the press. Of course, how can we inform St. Lucia of what we are doing if we don't work in the press? We have, n we have not in any way shown any, uh, the, any indication that we are not willing to talk to the press. We will w continue having our press conference. As a matter of fact, we might be having one soon. So there's no way that we are not going to work with the press. We are determined to work with the press as long as there's a need to pass on the information to put us in Russia. There's nothing to indicate that we are not willing to work with the press. I don't think we have done anything. Is there anything we have done to indicate that, madam? <laughs> yeah. But do you think, but one more thing, I think too, um, sometimes when it comes to the press as well, do you, do you think there's anything you could do better to work with us uh, in terms of the relation, the information we give you sometimes? Absolutely, I like that we're switching our rooms. Um, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, I also think there is um, some details. I remember having a conversation some time ago with the Director of Gender Relations, mm -hmm. and she was making reference to, um, it was around the time of violence against women, and she said that they'd seen a marked increase in some of the violent cases based on some of the stories mm -hmm. that were portrayed in the news. I do think that um, the angle of certain stories and how we report certain stories mm -hmm. may or may not have a positive or negative impact, and that is directly related. That is information that we would be able to obtain from the police mm -hmm. in terms of, um, well, not always, but um, I think there has to be closer dialogue. Not just what we say, but what it is that we want said, in terms of what areas that the, the focus is. Um, there is the, the, I wouldn't say, um, it's popular, but there is the, the tendency for sensationalization in the yes. press. There is. But I think more than anything, while we don't need your strategy, but we also need to be in the know as to what is happening. What, what is happening yeah. and then we can call the uh, RS or the call the yes. or comments and all the time for me. Oftentimes we it's not feasible, um, we don't get a comment or we Hey, I'll call you back, and that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to go on the Facebook page to know what's going on. Okay, well, well, so well it's off the time. Yeah, so it, it, there, there is effort on our part, but it is not always. It's not always um, yeah. feasible to get. Well, okay, well, we're hoping that moving forward, we could, we could work <laughs> together. And of course, of course, when you do get the information, we are hoping that the way it is it, it, it yeah, so <laughs> is sent out, so, yeah, so, so it could be <laughs> so it could be both ways. But we're looking forward to better, of course, better dialogue with the press. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, um, co commissioner, yeah, um, with all the um, heightened um, operation and you know, the, the bigging up of your, 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 your duties, mm -hmm. what about the substations? Would, 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 there be, would we now be seeing a lot more activity in the substation? Because people have complained that you know, sometimes they call the police and not um, the police are not very good. Yeah, but as, as we've said before, I mean, you don't ex expect the police to be everywhere every time. We try our utmost best to respond to the calls when we get it. With the um, RSS teams being here, it does not mean that there'll be less activities at the various substations. As I've indicated before, with RSS, you have, we have just, just strengthened us and have put more numbers on the ground. So we are hoping to continue to address the issues of crime in this country, whether it's in the South where we have the issues, at all levels, at substations, on a national basis, because we want better for St. Lucia. We are not in any way happy with what is happening in this country. We are not. We want to, of course, um, ensure the public that we're doing our utmost best and we are determined to make a difference. We are determined to bring this country back. We are determined to take our country back. 
from the criminals. We are determined and we'll do everything in our power lawfully to take back this country. And, our, and I can guarantee you that our officers are competent enough to do that. And I want at this time to really thank them so much. Our officers have worked very hard. And we as a citizen must show some more appreciation to our officers we, and some more respect. Our officers are doing very, working very hard to ensure that our country is a better place. St. Lucia is a, better, it's a very beautiful place. It is not fair what's happened. How do you feel as a St. Lucia doing something to just disrupt what's happening in this country if we did not have if we, do not, if we don't stop this issue of crime, we will not get the, 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 the health center that we want. We will not get the hospitals that we want. We will not get better roads. Because if, the, if we, be, we depend heavily on, on, on tourism, there are other countries who, who are doing well in, in terms of tourism. And if we, if we continue in this vein, it is not, maybe our officers won't get paid as well. We need to take back our country, everyone, and it is not the responsibility of the police. We need the efforts of everyone. Very often they ask, what is the police doing? What the officers are doing? If you're a teacher, ask yourself, what are you doing? If you're a nurse, ask yourself, what are you doing? If you're a citizen of the country, ask yourself, what are you doing? If you're a mother, ask yourself, what are you doing? We all can play a role to make St. Lucia better. It is our responsibility. Yes, we are law enforcers. We've been paid for a job. But to keep St. Lucia better in a better state is all of our responsibility. We can't do better that, than that. And we ought to do it. Let us be some more patriotic. Let us take back our country. Sons and daughters of St. Lucia. St. Lucia is beautiful. But we can't do better than that to take our country back. Wait, 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 wait. Jerry. I saw in the, are you satisfied with what was what is going on right now within the force and, and trying to get the assistance from general public, the, the level of, of um, cooperation within the public? I'm satisfied with what we were going now internal with the, the support from all levels, from all ranks, from the executive, from the from the reserve officers to the executive. We all are playing our role to make St. Lucia better. I'm also satisfied with this. We get, of course, don't get me wrong. We get support from other agencies, but I'm just saying that to make St. Lucia a better place, we all must work together. And we have to ask ourselves, are we satisfied? Can we do better than that? Can we do better than that? So we all must work together to get St. Lucia better. I'm determined, my team, we are determined to make St. Lucia a better place. So and the questions, yes, sir. Yes. Um, I know you mentioned that um, there, there is strength in working together, but how do you propose that we foster or build a better relationship between the police and the community and the rest of the citizens of Sanjusha? See, it's just a matter, you see, you look at what you have and you review, there's always room for improvement. You look at the strategy you have now, we have now, and of course right now as we speak, we are reviewing our community relations um, um, strategy. We need to work more with the police and the public working together. We need to work more together, hand in hand. So if we are doing one thing, say the Ministry of Education and the police, let us review what we are doing now to see how we can make it better to deal with the youth. If we are working with the teacher, the, the, the nurses, let us work together to see what we can do. The community, the teachers, the parents, we can work together to see what we can do. Parents need help in raising their children. So what can we do to assist the parents? Or what can be done in a holistic manner, not just with the police rather, but generally to assist the parents in how they raise their children? So it's something we need to take serious. This is our country. This is our country, people. We need to take back our country. The people who are committing the crime, they're not a the large number, not, not a, it's a very small number. Are we going to turn our backs on St. Lucia? We can do better than that, and we need to take our country back. And the challenge is in crime fighting. Yeah, the challenge is in crime fighting because the Prime Minister mentioned um, the custody suits not being there is a major hindrance. I just have to get this one. Well, I'm happy you're saying that. But though there are challenges, we are determined. And, and of course, the government, the Prime Minister, the Minister of the Cabinet, the Prime Minister have, has given us the assurance that the areas that are beyond our control, they will give all the assistance to make it make our challenges easier. In terms of holding facility and the holding facility, uh, the holding facility, CCTV, CCTV cameras, 
you know, everything to make our work easier. And of course, I have no reason to doubt that he will give us the assistance because we are already getting the assistance to make our work easier. I have a question. Yes, yes, Madam Commissioner, you mentioned the importance of the tourism sector to San Jose. Yeah. And lately I've noticed that the Guzzi Street Party is heavily, you know, um, patrol with officers in, yeah. in green. But what about the, um, the arrangements with the, I know there has been some moving around the Rodney, from the Guzzi Lake to the Rodney Bay area. Mm -hmm. What I'm happy that you've seen a difference at the Rodney Bay Strip. <laughs> so the other areas we are discussing how we can make it easier, how we can have more officers police in these areas. We are looking at the beaches, uh, you know, the police more rangers in place. So there are different things we are doing as police to making the different areas um, safer for citizens and for visitors as well. Because at the end of the day, even if I know that we are heavily dependent on tourism, we are not making St. Lucia safer only for visitors. We are making St. Lucia safer for citizens and visitors as well. Thank you. Thank you.